Hello everyone and welcome back for a new lesson. Today we are going to look at how we wrangle with data that is grouped. This is an approach which is called split, apply, combine. It involves using the group by deploy a verb combined with other verbs such as arrange, filter and mutate. Let's go! Welcome to this lesson, everyone. Today we will have only one learning objective, which will be to use group by with different deep layer verbs. So it will be simple yet intense. Let's get started. Our data sets of today are our data sets that you are already familiar with. So we'll be using the COVID-19 data set from Yaoundé, Cameroon. We're gonna select some of the variables of this big data set, and we're gonna make, to start with, a small subset which will be using only the sex and the weight variable. Let's go ahead and do this. So we select the sex and the weight variable, which gives us a very small yet concise data frame with all our data entries and only two variables. Then we'll also be using as another data set for our practice questions, the sarcopenia data set that you are already familiar with, which goes over the condition of sarcopenia, so generalized muscle loss, and which you will be wrangling as practice. And now we will start with the first verb, which behaves in a different manner, whether you're applying it over groups or by itself. So we're going to look at arranging by group. So the verb arrange orders the rows of a data frame by the values of a selected column. It's only sensitive to groupings if the by group argument is set to true. Let's illustrate this. First, let's remind ourselves of the small data subset that we'll be using. Then let's arrange this data by weight. So the way of writing this is using the, word, the verb arrange with the weight in kilogram variable. And what we can see here is as we can expect, the lower weights have been brought to the top of the data frame. Now, what would happen if we were to group the data first before arranging it? We could expect a different output. So let's imagine we group by sex and then we arrange by weight kilogram. Let's do this. Well, actually, what you can see is that the arrangement is still the same. We still have exactly the weights ordered in the same way, even though we grouped our data. And the reason for this is that if we want the grouping to affect our arrangement, we have to set the by group argument to true. So let's repeat the same thing. We're going to group by sex. Then we're going to arrange by weight in kilogram. But this time, we're going to set our by group argument equal to true. Let's look at what we get, which is going to be different. So now we have all females ordered from lightest to heaviest, then all males ordered from lightest to heaviest. The grouping has affected the arrangement. However, one thing that you may have already noticed if you've been playing around with arrange or something that I get to highlight to you now is that arrange can actually group automatically. So you may not even have to use this argument to reflect the grouping. You can simply directly put inside arrange the two different variables. Let's see what this means in the code. We could also write arrange sex, weight, kilogram. When we do so, we see that we get exactly the same output as when we were first grouping by sex and then arranging by weight, taking into account the grouping. Arrange does this already by itself. Now, another aspect that we want to maybe cover is um, if we wanted to order weights, but in the descending order. 
a kind reminder that we use descend function for the descending order. So the way we would have basically sorting by sex and then having the heaviest people first would look something like this. So we arrange by sex, but we say that we want a descending weight in kilogram. So you can see that you can put descending on either one of your arrangement variables, and this can control how you are arranging them exactly. So there we go, here we get a different output. So now our data set is the female's heaviest to lightest, then the male's heaviest to lightest. Now, it's your turn to have a go and have a tryout at this, uh, at this arranging call. So you will be using the Sarcopenia data set and you will first arrange by sex and then by grip strength. The second question that you will be addressing now to apply this arrangement verb will be to use the Sarcopenia data set and its age group variable which stores the age as strings. So it's either 60s, 70s, 80s. You're going to convert this variable as a factor with the levels in the right order, so ascending order of age. If you have a doubt about how to re-level or define the levels of a factor, I invite you to look back on the case one lesson when we went over this. And then I ask you with a nested arrange to arrange first by age group, so younger individuals first, and then by height in meters, so shorter individuals first. And I will see you back here to continue the lesson in a second. Now we will see another topic, which is filtering by groups. As a kind reminder, I'm sure you're now familiar with it, filter is used to keep or drop rows based on a condition. And filter, when it is applied on grouped data, is going to do the filtering operation separately for each group. So what does this mean? Well, imagine we first want to filter the data for the heaviest person. We would write filter weight in kilogram equal equal max weight in kilogram. This gives us one female individual, which is 162 kilograms. Now, what if we wanted not the heaviest person in the whole data set, but the heaviest man and the heaviest woman? Well, we would have to take the maximal weight per gender group. This immediately makes you think of group by. So we group by sex, and then we do the same filtering operation, but on group data. So once again, we do the weight in kilograms equal equal to the max weight in kilograms. And now we do not only have this female who is 162 kilograms, we also have the heaviest male in our data set, which is 128 kilograms. So now we have had a grouped filtering to find the heaviest man and the heaviest woman. We have seen that with groupings, we can do nested groupings, so groupings by more than one variable. Well, you can do filtering by nested groupings. So let's say we want to work on this example we have just seen, the heaviest man, the heaviest woman, but now we want them by age group. Well, we would group by sex and by age category, and we would perform the same filtering operation below. What is changing is the grouping that we are imposing on our data set. When we run this, we now see that we have many more rows and information we actually have all in all 10 rows. And the reason that we have 10 rows is because we have two sex groups and five groups per age groups. And this makes 10 unique groupings. 
the 10 unique groupings with the heaviest individual per group are presented in this data frame. You might also notice that this is a bit scattered as an output. So let's see how we would combine group by, filter, and arrange to have something a bit more readable. Let's now arrange by sex and age category. We now have something that's a bit more ordered, where we have the females here, the five rows, and the males here, the five rows. Yet, we're still seeing that there's a bit of an issue with the age category and the way they are ordered. So, let's see how we would handle this. We're going to redefine the age category as a factor to make sure that this is in the order that we want. So, we would write factor age category and then we would define the levels in a C vector by putting them as 5 to 14, which are the youngest, then 15 to 29, then 30 to 44, then 45 to 64, and finally 65 plus with a space there. We want to respect that, actually. We can see that there are spaces everywhere. And if we don't put exactly the same string, then we will not get a good conversion. So let's check our parenthesis. We see that we don't need this one, so we can remove it. And when we run this, we now have a very ordered data frame. We can be happy with this. It's very clear, very readable. Where we have our first five rows, which are females, because we arranged first by sex, then by age category. And moreover, our age categories are in the right order. It's your turn to practice. So here is how you will be practicing this today. You'll be grouping the sarcopenia data frame by age group and by sex. And then you will filter for the highest skeletal muscle, mass, muscle index in each of these nested groupings. Welcome back. I hope you now feel comfortable with filtering on groups by combining filter and group by. We will now move to another combo, very powerful as well, which is mutating by group, which as you can expect is going to combine group by and mutate. As a kind reminder, although once again I'm pretty sure you're familiar with this by now, mutate is used to modify columns in place or to create new ones. With group data, mutate operates over each group independently. That's kind of the common song of these groupings. It's that when you apply a verb over them, then the wrangling is going to be applied by group. So, let's first see a regular mutate call. We are going to create a new variable which is going to rank respondents by weight. So to do this we call mutate and we are going to call our rank weight variable which is going to be equal to rank weight kilogram. Here we have our initial mutated variable, where we see that the first individual is the 901th lightest individual over our entire data set. To be honest, I, maybe it would actually make more sense to have the rank be in a descending order, meaning that we are talking about the heaviest individuals. Let's quickly change that. The way we would do that is we would do our rank weight is equal to rank descending weight kilograms. Now we have something that, may, that is maybe a bit more intuitive to read, which is that our first individual in the data set is the 71st heaviest individual overall, and so on and so forth with all the other individuals listed here. This also makes sense as we saw that our heaviest person overall was 162 kilos. 
So we also can do a sanity check that everything's good with our new ranking variable. We've done a simple mutate call. We're familiar with that. Let's see what happens when we do a group mutate call. We want to add this weight rank column per sex group in the data frame. So we're going to group by gender. And we want to know each person's weight rank in their sex category. So not overall, overall individuals, but it's how are women ranked compared to women? How are men ranked compared to men? Let's see what this looks like in the code. We would do group by sex. Then we would do the same operation as above, which is mutate rank weight equal to rank descending weight in kilograms. Let's once again arrange this to get some clarity. So we arrange by sex. So we've arranged by sex to have a bit of a clearer view of the different ranks. Now, same as previously shown for filtering, well, we can do a mutating with nested groupings. Let's see this with a simple example. Let's group by sex and age category and then have the rank of each individual in their own group. So we group by sex, by age, category. If you look at the first individual, who is a female in the age category 45 to 64, we see that in her sex and age group, she is ranked as the 20th heaviest individual. So now we have a ranking which is even more tailored to different groups. So now it's your turn to practice. You'll be using the Sarcopenia dataset. You'll be grouping by age group and creating a new variable called the grip strength rank, which is going to rank per age group each individual's grip strength. So I'll let you try this out. We're going to take this last mini bit of the lesson to highlight the importance of ungrouping your data once you are done data wrangling over groups. So as written here in capital letters, it's super important when you do a group by operation to then think ungroup once you're done. We're gonna illustrate this with the example we just saw where we created groups defined by the gender and age category of individuals and all the different combinations possible, and then created a ranking variable for each of these different groups. So let's run this code chunk to get our Yao modified. And now imagine that on this data set that we have kept, we want to filter to get the oldest person in the data. Well, we would usually do this very tranquilly. We would do, so age years equal equal max age years. When we run this, uh-oh, wow, okay. Well, we don't actually just get the oldest person in the entire data frame. We still get the oldest person based on each of the groups and categories that we have created. So we get the oldest person for each combination of gender and age categories. We get the oldest person for the males aged 45 to 64. We get the oldest person for the males aged 65 plus, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So in the end, you'll have a data frame, which you can see here has 55 rows. And this is not at all what you intended. And this is okay if you're checking every single step of your data wrangling, but if this goes unobserved, maybe for a plot or something like that, well, it can really cause you some time to realize what's going on and what's wrong. So let's see. We forgot to ungroup. Now let's do this properly. All right. So we do our Yao modified based on this definition. And then we are going to add at the end, very important, right here, ungroup. There we go. So let's run this one. And here we do again the same thing as before. So filter age years equal, equal max age years. And we want 
only the oldest person in the data set, not the oldest person per group. And this is what we get. We actually get two individuals, but this is because they are the two oldest individuals and they are both 79 years old. So there you go. See you in a second for our wrap up. So congrats for completing this lesson. You now know how to operate on groups with different verbs. You know how to combine group by and arrange. You know how to combine group by and filter. And you know how to combine group by and mutate. You are now ready for further data wrangling and I hope to see you soon. Bye bye. For more resources, visit our website where you can track your progress, access interactive quizzes and lesson notes and connect with our teachers and other learners like you. And if you'd like a more guided experience, we also offer live online boot camps with expert help. So join us at thegraphcourses.org to start your learning journey today.